In this video, we're going to create an advanced corridor using multiple baselines instead of multiple regions like we did in the previous video. But before we do that, I have a little bit of housekeeping that I did behind the scenes. When we created our offset alignments, we were not prepared to create them to have dynamic links to profiles because we didn't have a profile created for our center line alignment. So what I did is I went ahead and I selected this center line alignment and I went and created new offset alignments. I deleted the old ones and I applied the new create offset profile command inside of this window here and selected to create profiles for offset alignments, link them to the dev profile parent profile and set them as a negative 2% crossfall from the center line and then created them. And then I had to recreate the widenings that we had before that were, we set them as 20 feet so that they would be a five foot offset from our 15 foot. And then they have linear transitions at 20 feet long set at the corners or the, the radiuses of our curves here. And then while you're doing that, or if you want to do that yourself, otherwise you can use the provided files that we have, but you can make sure that your transitions link between these points that we have here originally, because these points are associated with a point in space, not associated to the original offset alignments. So we did these updates. In addition, I created a design profile for our cul-de-sac alignment. I renamed the cul-de-sac alignment to cul-de-sac and I added a new profile alignment that will link up with the exterior edges of our roadway here. So that's based on what the elevations are along our profile at the beginning of this alignment here. There's a little bit of iterative design process. The elevations I chose might not be perfect and so we can modify those later if we need to. So once you've done those two things, done the offset alignments and created the profile or opened the provided data sets, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with creating a new corridor. So we're gonna jump into the corridor dropdown, we're gonna select corridor, and inside of the selected corridor dropdown, we're gonna again create the dev corridor. We are going to create the dev corridor using the basic corridor style and the C road core layer. We're going to do an alignment and profile baseline type. We are going to do the alignment dev align, and we are going to do the dev profile profile. We're going to use a assembly of dev target, but we are not going to set our targets yet. We're just going to get the baselines and the regions set up. So we're going to go ahead and set baseline and region parameters and select OK. So inside the basin, baseline and region parameters, we're going to set our dev align and dev profile start and end stations for our corridor. And so I'm going to leave my, I'm going to set my starting as right here. And I'm going to set my ending as the point where our cul-de-sac picks up. And so our cul-de-sac picks up at the end of this curve here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new baseline. So I'm going to click add baseline. I am now going to build this baseline based off of my cul-de-sac alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and select the cul-de-sac alignment and have alignment and profile checked. I'm going to click OK. And inside of my baseline now that is for cul-de-sac, I now have to specify my vertical profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to select my cul-de-sac profile and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to expand out my baseline. I'm going to right click on this other baseline that I haven't created a region for and add a region. When I add this region, I'm going to choose the assembly cul-de-sac and I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to expand out this baseline so I can see this region. I'm going to leave this entire region from 0 to 2 plus 2141 because it's going to go from the beginning point that's underneath this window all the way around the cul-de-sac to this endpoint right here. So I don't need to shorten it or elongate it. I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. We are not gonna set the targets or change the frequencies just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And what Civil 3D is gonna ask us to do, as we've stated before, is anytime you make a change, you need to rebuild the corridor. So we're gonna rebuild the corridor. 
And when we rebuild this, we'll get the warnings that we haven't set our targets, but we're also going to see something very strange here. This corridor doesn't quite look right. And what ended up happening, if you go and you look at the object viewer, is inside of the object viewer, you'll see we have a sidewalk for this whole corridor and it looks exactly like our last corridor. But when you get down to this cul-de-sac, what ended up happening is when we built the assembly, and this can happen quite often, we built it to the wrong sides. So we built the road to the right-hand side and the sidewalk to the left-hand side because the alignment goes this direction. So the sidewalk is building to the left of the alignment and the road is building to the right of the alignment. And we can fix this by going to our assembly and we can select the entire assembly, or we can go up to assembly properties up here, and we can go to construction. And inside of construction, we have all of the pieces and parts of our assembly, and we can select them and modify their parameters. So I can go to basic lane transition, choose my side, and instead of having it on right, I can go to left, and I can select OK. And if I move this window over, you're not going to see any changes happen yet, but as I move down, I'm going to go ahead and change my basic curb and gutter. I'm going to change it to right. I'm also going to go to basic sidewalk. I'm going to change that to right as well. And then I'm going to go to basic side slope cut ditch. I'm also going to change that to right. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'll hit apply and you'll notice the assembly has flipped itself about the baseline. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what Civil 3D will tell me now inside of my prospector tab is that my corridor is out of regen, it's out of order, it's, it's, it needs to be regen. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and rebuild this. And we still have the warnings that we haven't set our targets yet. But now when we look at our corridor and we go to the object viewer, what we have available to us now is that we have the sidewalks on the correct sides. And you can see that inside of this object viewer right here. We have the sidewalks running down the outsides and going around the cul-de-sac.